So we recently had Sheriff Villanueva on our show. Now it's time to hear from his opponent, Robert Luna. Welcome. Good to see you, Chief. Um, so let's start with sort of the basic, most important question that voters have in front of them right now. If you become sheriff, what does that mean for my life? What's the biggest change that we're going to see in the life of the average voter if it's now Sheriff Robert Luna? Uh, that I have the experience, the knowledge, because I've done it before to keep you and your family safe. I actually have strategies to do that, not just rhetoric uh, that goes uh, against everybody. I'm, I understand that collaboration uh, is the key uh, to uh, solving some of the most complex challenges we face, such as a trajectory of crime, the unhoused, and many other things that we're dealing with, including the divisions uh, that you just spoke about in our cities, which are absolutely unacceptable. So you get a man of integrity, somebody who holds themselves accountable, uh, and others uh, that work for us accountable as well. There's a huge contrast between myself and my opponent. Well, the inspector general is to do just that, and that is to keep your department, the sheriff's department, to hold it accountable. It released a new report. We want to put up some of that information of what we learned today. It shows seven of 104 recommendations by the inspector general uh, were implemented between 2019 and 2022 by Sheriff Vinueva. Of the 22 recommendations this year, zero have been implemented. Those include recommendations related to allegations of racial disparities in contacts with high school students by the department's Lancaster station and the underreporting of civilian stop data. Uh, Chief Luna, I'm curious how you would handle the relationship with the inspector general. What recommendations, how would you handle a recommendation that came to you? Uh, you'd get full, I'd get full cooperation, uh, both to the Civilian Oversight Committee and the inspector general. Uh, public trust is absolutely essential, and cooperating with the inspector general uh, and the recommendations are 100 percent something that has to occur i mean this it, it, this latest inspector general report published on friday to think about it only seven recommended reforms have been accomplished that's less than 10 percent this sheriff is getting an f that's why we need change that's why i represent the change it's a stunning example of how this sheriff refuses to modernize and improve the sheriff's department if I'm elected, I'm going to deliver those reforms that this department needs so that we can move on and regain our public confidence that this sheriff, unfortunately, has ruined. Uh, we need change, and that's been very clear to me as I've been campaigning. So you, would you say yes to all of those recommendations? And can you, in, in a way that maybe somebody that isn't in the weeds of this might understand, give an example of one recommendation that might change uh, if you're in charge? Well, when you start looking at them overall, uh, the important things like police training, uh, reporting hate crimes, which you just reported on, uh, the tracking of uses of force have not been made. I would absolutely start there. Uh, you you got to go through those, figure out why they came to us, uh, work with people to make sure we're moving forward, and then report back to the public. Uh, uh, with our partners, the inspector general should be a partner. Yes, they oversee us, but they're there for a purpose. Uh, and yes, I'd look through each and every one of them. I'm sure there's going to be some that maybe one or two that you disagree with, but to only have seven out of 111, that's outrageous. Every voter, every community member should say that that is completely unacceptable. One of the issues with the Sheriff's Department has been the issue of so-called deputy gangs, which precede, by the way, Sheriff Villanueva. So if you were to become sheriff, how do you handle that issue? Well, uh, I'll remind all of you because it was your debate, our debate we were engaged in several weeks ago when the sheriff was asked this question. He referred to it as a unicorn. It's something everybody talks about but doesn't exist. That's what he said. His words, not mine. Uh, that's outrageous. In order to address a problem, in order to fix a problem, you have to acknowledge that it exists. So for me, I tell you, it does exist. It is completely unacceptable that we're talking about deputies and gangs in the same sentence. Uh, and uh, for me, it's about accountability, individual accountability for the employees involved, 
and the supervisors and managers looking the other way, uh, they shouldn't be supervisors or maybe not at all on the department. Now, I want to emphasize this is talking about a percentage of members of the sheriff's department because the majority of the men and women that work there are amazing people. Uh, but uh, back to this gang thing, I have asked that we have federal and state intervention. That means the FBI, federal and state DOJ, uh, open up every drawer, pull back every curtain. We shouldn't have anything to hide. This is how we're going to regain the public trust. Mm. Um, and what about cooperating with civilian oversight? How many times has this sheriff been asked to testify or his high level command and they refuse to come in and testify? That is completely again, unacceptable. Uh, this is like a bad reality show. Uh, we need to change what is happening here. And then look, there's another story today about Spike the canine, that there is, uh, there's accused of cover up and wrongdoing and a veterinarian has come out today saying, no, I never said that. Uh, this is not good. This is just a continuous pattern and practice of corruption, lying, uh, and this, my opponent, needs to be removed from office. Yeah, and he would say that there is no such thing as deputy gangs, um, that there, there may be people that share tattoos, but there isn't some sort of violent underground thing happening in the department show me the evidence of that we know there have been a lot of people including the new yorker reporters and others that have put forward a pretty compelling case about deputy gangs and we know your take on it we just heard um thank you very much chief uh you think you're gonna win <laughs> uh i didn't enter this race to lose okay. i entered this race uh because i care uh i want to make a difference and it's my ministry and this sheriff's department needs to be turned around. The men and women of that department deserve a better leader. And more importantly, the community deserves their sheriff's department back in their hands. We need to give the sheriff's department back to the community it serves. And that's exactly what I'm going to do when I'm elected. Chief Robert Luna, thank you.